all right so um i guess another video with the fpga things that i'm doing these days um we are on the ice stick still and i have got a new pixel to work and the reason i'm saying a new pixel i will explain a bit later on so let me just give a really quick demo to show you all um how this kind of works and i'm just going to drop the exposure a whole lot so that you all can see the pixel actually changing colors from red green and then blue um so let's go back to where we were that's about right um so yeah it is working and uh, it was not super easy i actually had to get my uh logic analyzer out do all the stuff in pulse view and see what the frames were um and what the what the waveform was and all of that good stuff so the reason it's hard to drive a new pixel and at the same time very easy is because the logic behind it is very simple it's just very hard to replicate on any piece of hardware uh, especially if you're using something like an Arduino, you really have to go down and code it in the assembly language so that there's not much compiler and, you know, the whatever the basic OS overhead there would be uh, because Arduino does run a very small kind of a bootloader and then runs the application over it. So it's still not as real time as an FPGA. FPGA just creates a hardware that's designed specifically to run one single new pixel um so the thing is that there are whenever you send a data to any digital device there are zeros and there's one and then there's waveforms to create those uh, those signals or uh, those zeros and ones in the case of new pixel it looks kind of like this so the zero has a waveform like this and a one has a waveform similar to this uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless we put the times in so the high uh, the high point of the zero uh, when you are sending the zero bit it lasts for less than 0.4 microseconds or 400 nanoseconds and the low time lasts for 0.8 now with the one part it's 0.85 and 0.45 microseconds um, and that timing is actually pretty hard to replicate because on a 12 megahertz clock device like this on a 12 megahertz clock device like this 0.4 microseconds is around three to four clocks at max so that's one loop two loop three loop and you're done and that's running at twelve thousand thousand times a second uh, the fpj that is so um that was the main challenge to get it down to those three to four um clock cycles now it is kind of flexible so it can be three and four i've tried on both um this uh, low uh, low one here i put it as five uh, five cycles and the higher one was nine uh, and the point eight here was also nine so so nine uh, nine cycles so so this is how it is apart from that there is just a bunch of if and else statement that arranges that the zeros and one in the form of um seven bits for green so zero one two three four five six seven this makes up your green channel next seven bits uh, make up your uh, blue or red channel and then your blue channel uh, is what it is after that uh, you just put it in a loop a little do a thing and change color on the go now the thing why it's single pixel is that you have to hard code the number of pixels there are. You can't, there's no way to detect the number of pixels so you, that cannot be dynamic. And the way it goes is there's this 
uh, in a in a in a like a clock kind of a diagram there are the 24 bits for first pixels 24 bit for the second pixel 24 bit for the nth pixel so uh, and then there is a whole reset period uh, of around 600 clocks or there about of 200 nanoseconds or something whatever um, and so the first the first um, pixel uh, second pixel and the nth number of pixel the data goes all together once you reset it that's the time the microcontroller tells the pixel to light up so the more the pixels the less the frame wave, frame rate and vice versa and that's how it goes so there's no way to detect or hard code a pixel and then considering that each pixels take um, 24 bits you will have to have those many registers or ram in your fpga to store it because if you are uh, if, if you are doing it like without any external support then you can do it you know change, change the numbers live but if you are having you know uh, an arduino or another controller uh, give the data through r squared c or you are to your fpga then you would need to have all those buffer in place because you cannot dynamically do that you cannot you know have each pixel right uh, light up individually if you have a string of thousand pixels then uh, 24 bit into thousand that's the amount of data that goes at once and then the pixel lights up weird thing but that's how it works so i hope you guys enjoyed this video um i'll try making more uh, but see you all in the next one